Hi, this is Dave from Notes and Volts, and in this video, we're going to finish up the Wham Jammer project by building a custom enclosure. In part two of this series, we built up this permanent version of the circuit on an Adafruit Permaproto board. If you haven't seen it yet, go back and watch that. Before we start, I'd once again like to thank my Patreon supporters for making this video possible. Also, if you're a Twitch fan, check out the Notes and Volts Twitch channel where you can watch me build these projects live on stream. Alright, let's get started. To enclose this project, we're going to use a Hammond 1590BB box. I chose the red color because it fits the theme of this project. Now that we have our box, we just need to drill it out. To start, visit notesandvolts.com to download and print out the drill guide. Make sure you print it out in full size or one-to-one -one scale. Check the scale at the bottom of the page with a ruler to make sure it actually is full size. Now grab a pair of scissors and cut out both templates. Now we'll center the template on the top of the enclosure and tape it down. Now we'll grab a automatic center punch and carefully mark the center of both holes. Now we'll drill through both holes with a 1 8 drill bit. I'm using a drill press here, but you can also do this with a hand drill. The tip of the drill will center itself in the mark we made earlier. Once it's lined up, make sure you clamp the part down securely. We'll do the same with the second hole. And there you go. Now we can get ready to drill the back edge of the enclosure. The back edge is the side furthest away from the top holes. Once again, we'll use a paper template and center it on the case. Try to get the bottom edge of the template even with the bottom of the case. Now mark the holes with your center punch. I'm going to wrap the front edge of the case with tape so I don't scratch the paint while I'm drilling it. We'll clamp the part to the drill press and drill all the holes with our 1 8 inch drill bit. Now we're ready to drill out the larger holes. I don't have the footage for this project, but here's another project where I did the exact same thing. Here I'm using a 5 8 inch stepped drill bit. I find stepped drill bits make drilling larger holes much easier. Just make sure everything's securely clamped down when you do this. Now we'll create the front panel graphics for the project. First, you need to go to notesandvolts.com and download the file. Use a color printer and some matte photo paper to print out the file. Grab some scissors or an X-Acto knife and carefully cut it out.
Now I'll use a standard office laminator to laminate the front graphics and make them more durable. To attach the graphics to the enclosure, I'm going to use this 3M468MP adhesive paper. Cut out a square slightly larger than your graphics. Now peel off one side and stick it to the back of your front panel graphics. Be careful because this stuff is really sticky. Now carefully cut around the edge of your front panel graphic. I leave a little lip around the edge just to keep the lamination from coming apart. Now we're ready to attach the graphics to our enclosure. I like to wipe it down with some isopropyl alcohol to make sure there's no grease on the surface. Next, I'll center the graphics on the top of the enclosure and use some painter's tape to create a hinge. This will keep the graphics lined up when I remove the adhesive backing. Now peel off the back of the adhesive and stick the graphics down. You only get one shot at this, so make sure everything's lined up. Okay, that looks great. So now I just need to grab an X-Acto knife and cut around the edge of the mounting holes. To finish this project, we just need to install the MIDI and power jacks in the enclosure and then wire them to the board. Once again, we'll use this wiring diagram from notesandvolts.com that shows you how everything connects to the board. To start, I'll use some pliers to bend the contacts of the MIDI jack out a little bit. This will make it easier to connect the wires. Next, I'll strip some 22 gauge stranded wire and solder it to the MIDI jack exactly as shown in the diagram. This is optional, but I like to put heat shrink tubing over the terminals just to be extra safe. Once it's in place, I shrink the tubing with a lighter. Now we can start wiring up the power jack. Notice that I've plugged in the adapter and I'm measuring the terminals with a multimeter to determine which one is positive and which is negative. If the meter shows a negative voltage, that tells me that the probes are backwards. Now that I've identified the jack terminals, I'll solder some red 22 gauge stranded wire to the positive terminal and some black to the ground terminal. And once again, I'll use some heat shrink tubing to be extra safe. Now that all our jacks are wired, we can install them in the enclosure. I like to use pop rivets, but you could also use M3 bolts. And here they are in place. 
Notice the orientation of the jacks. Now I'll install the power jack using the nut it came with. Now I'll strip and solder the wires to the circuit board exactly as shown on the diagram. Once everything's in place, I'll use my side cutters to cut everything flush with the board. Okay, now everything's soldered. So now we'll take some standoffs and attach them to the board with some M3 bolts. And finally, I'll use some black anodized button head bolts to attach the board to the top of the enclosure. Before we close up the case, make sure you've installed the jumper on the two pin programming header. You need to remove this jumper if you ever wanna send a new program to the Arduino. Now we can reattach the back of the enclosure. And to finish it off, we'll attach some stick-on rubber feet. And there you go, we are done. All right, that's going to do it for the Wham Jammer project. I hope you have as much fun with this as I did. Please follow Notes and Volts on social media. And to end this video, I'd like to personally thank my Patreon supporters. I'll see you soon with a new project. Until then, go make some noise.